I'm gonna do number six on the review sheet really quick. Uh, talks about a rocket going up in the air and the total flight time for this rocket is uh, 44 seconds. Total time equals 44 seconds. Well, since it started at the ground, it's shooting up in the air and then coming back down, we have to recognize that it's gonna spend half that time going up and half going down. So up here is where it's going to reach the halfway point. And the, one of the questions earlier was, what is its uh, velocity at the very top of its path? And the velocity here would be zero. So if it was going up for uh, half the time, then we would say 44 divided by two is gonna be 22. So uh, 22 seconds is the T that we wanna work with in our equations for figuring out how high the rocket went and also how fast it's gonna be going when it lands, all right? So in order to figure out how fast, let's do the landing velocity first. Landing V. How fast is it going? Well, V, when there is acceleration or free fall involved, equals AT. Velocity equals acceleration times time. That's for an object that is changing its velocity while it's going along. In this case, it's free fall, so we know what the specific acceleration is. V equals GT. G is the acceleration due to gravity. So let's plug the numbers in here. V equals G. G is uh, negative 10 meters per second squared in this case. Um, and then T, we're going to use 22, not 44, 22. Okay, because we're only concerned with this object on its downward flight. It's as if somebody just took this rocket up there and just dropped it, and it fell for 22 seconds. Well, how fast would it be going when it hits the ground? Well, we multiply these numbers together, and we get negative 220 meters per second, okay? But the next part of the question asks for, what about the, uh, what about the launching velocity? Well, if the, launching, or the landing velocity is negative 220 meters per second, that means the launching velocity has to be equal to that, but in the opposite direction, so it should be positive 220 meters per second. Also, we're talking about distance. How far up did the rocket go, or how far did it fall is really the better question. If it started up here with a velocity of zero, and it hit the ground down here, how much uh, distance did it cover over that time? And we can't use distance equals velocity over time. We can't, because this is something that's falling and accelerating as it falls. So instead, we want to use the equation d equals one half a t squared is technically the equation, but since this is free fall, we're going to use g because that's a specific acceleration for things that are falling on Earth. And so in this case, one half times negative 10, although with distance, we don't really want a negative distance, so I'm going to put positive 10 in there, meters per second squared and then uh, t squared, so 22 squared, 22 seconds squared. And if you do all that math out, you should come up with a distance that is about, uh, let's see, negative 2,420 meters. Now, of course, it's negative because when I did this, I actually did um, put a negative sign in there. So I'm not worried about the negative sign when we're talking about distance. With velocity, I am because I want to know uh, which direction you're talking about, up or down. Okay? Free fall.